Apa kabar Mas Rido? Selamat siang. Oh, halo Mas Prof. Wah, Wah senang bertemu dengan jenengan hari ini nih. Bagaimana suasana di Manado ini? Ini lumayan panas ini. Semarang sudah hujan Mas Rido. Oh maaf, jaringan saya sepertinya agak, sebentar, ini saya tethering dengan HP, sepertinya saya tadi tidak mendengar pertanyaan Prof. Gideon. Iya, Semarang panas sekali Prof. Gideon. Oh, iya, katanya salah satu paling panas ya. Iya betul, rekor nih. <laughs> ini Mas ini Prof. Mas Prof. Ini. Ada, ada Bu Sukarni, ada Pak Rifka, ada Mbak Sulistianing Tias, selalu juga Sulistia, nanti baru gabung Pak Kaprodi. Atau kita kita, kita, kita ya, mulai gimana, gimana ya? ya? Saya serahkan saya pada MC dulu ya. Eh, bener ya? Bener ya? Uh, ada nah, Pak Alam belum ya? ya? Pak Alam sudah ada. Uh, saya serahkan pada MC ya. Ya baik, silakan. Oke, okay. assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are truly honored to have the presence of the Vice Dean of Academic and Student Affairs, Universitas Diponegoro, Professor Dr. Alam Syah M. Hum, along with the head of the study program, Dr. Octiva Heri Chandra M. Hum, and of course our outstanding invited speaker. Profesor Dr. Mr. Gideon Maru M. Hung from Universitas Negeri Manado, as well as our moderator, Dr. Sukarni Suryaningsi M. Hung from Universitas Diponegoro. And thank you everyone for joining our visiting professor today with the topic Presidential Inaugural Address, The Current Race of American Civilization, an event brought to you by the Faculty of Humanities, Universitas Diponegoro. And I am Suistiani Tias, your Master of Ceremony for today's event. First, I will briefly convey our agenda this morning. First is the opening by the MC. Second, singing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. And then a welcoming speech by the Vice Dean of Academic and Student Affair, Dr. Professor Dr. Alam Shah M. Hung. And next, the presentation of our topic today, Presidential Inaugural Address, The Current Trace of American Civilization by our speaker, Professor Dr. Mr. Gideon Maru M. Hung, which will be guided by our moderator, Dr. Sukarni Suryaningsi M. Hung, and then followed by a Q&A session. Now, everyone, let's start with our first agenda today, which is singing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya, for the operator, the screen is yours.
thank you very much, everyone. Now let us all hear the welcoming speech by the Vice Dean of Academic and Student Affairs, Universitas Diponegoro, Professor Dr. Alam Shah M. Hun. Over to you, Pak Alam. Okay, thank you, Mbak Tias. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I will speak Indonesia language. Yeah. Selamat pagi di Semarang dan selamat siang di Manado. Siang, Pak. Salam, yeah. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Yang saya hormati, tamu istimewa kita dari program studi sastra Inggris, Profesor Dr. Gideon Maru. Ya, selamat datang, Prof. Gideon dari ya, Universitas Iya, Bro, sama-sama. Terima ya. kasih. Yang saya hormati, Kaprodi dan Sekretaris Program Studi Sastra Inggris, Pak Dr. Oktiva dan Pak Catur. Yang saya hormati, para uh, moderator, Ibu Moderator, Bu Dr. Sukarni Suryaningsi, para dosen, di sini tadi ada Bro Arido, kemudian Mas Rifka, kemudian ada Bapak dan Ibu yang lain, mohon maaf, de, bila tidak saya sebutkan karena uh, tidak uh, terbaca. Ke kemudian yang saya banggakan, para partisipan, para mahasiswa, ya dan para panitia. Uh, semoga Keberhasilan, keberkahan, dan kelancaran selalu tercurah kepada kita semua dari Allah Tuhan Yang Maha Kuasa. <tuh> Pertama, saya uh, mewakili Dekan Fakultas Ilmu Budaya, Bu Dr. Nur Hayati M. Hum, menyampaikan salam hormat karena beliau tidak bisa hadir pada acara ini karena Budikan sedang membuka acara seminar internasional program studi S3 sejarah yang dilakukan secara offline pada waktu dan jam yang sama. Selanjutnya, saya ucapkan selamat datang dan salam hangat kepada Profesor Dr. Gideon Maru M. Hum yang telah hadir sebagai speaker dalam acara visiting profesor dalam negeri dengan topik presidential inaugural address the current trace of american civilization yang diselenggarakan oleh program studi sastra inggris fakultas ilmu budaya <tuh> saya juga menyampaikan apresiasi dan penghargaan atas terselenggaranya kegiatan ini yang dilakukan oleh program studi sastra Inggris. Bapak, Ibu, dan para mahasiswa yang saya hormati, uh, saya yakin bahwa topik ini sangat menarik karena berhubungan dengan salah satu peminatan di program studi sastra Inggris, yaitu kajian Amerika, dan melalui topik yang terkait dengan pidato pelantikan presiden melacak jejak peradaban Amerika saat ini akan memberikan insight baru baik itu pengetahuan maupun pemahaman ya terkait dengan sejarah Amerika dan hal-hal eh, yang berkaitan dengan Amerika bagi para mahasiswa program studi sastra Inggris Fakultas Ilmu Budaya Universitas Diponegoro melalui ilmu yang diberikan dalam kegiatan visiting profesor ini saya berharap para audiens para mahasiswa dapat mendengarkan dengan seksama pemaparan dari keynote speaker yaitu Profesor Dr. Gideon Marum Semoga kehadiran pembicara pagi hari ini, mungkin siang ini di Manado sebagai awal kerjasama yang lebih intens antara program studi sastra Inggris FIB Undip dengan FBS jurusan bahasa Inggris Universitas Negeri Manado di bidang yang lain seperti joint research, joint publication, uh, kegiatan-kegiatan pertukaran 
mahasiswa dalam kegiatan pertukaran mahasiswa dan lain-lain sebagainya di masa ini dan masa yang akan datang. Sekali lagi, terima kasih kepada pembicara dan terima kasih kepada Prodi Sastra Inggris, Kaprodi, Prodi Moderator, Panitia, dan para dosen, serta mahasiswa, utamanya Panitia yang telah bekerja untuk mewujudkan penyelenggaraan kegiatan ini. Atas izin kita semua dan perkenan dari Allah Tuhan Yang Maha Kuasa, acara visiting profesor dengan topik Presidential Inaugural Address The Current Trace of American Civilization dengan mengucap Bismillahirrahmanirrahim saya nyatakan dibuka. Terima kasih kepada semuanya. Salam sehat. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your warm opening remarks, Pak Alam Syah. Now, everyone, before we start the main agenda today, let us all take a group picture first. Therefore, if you haven't turned on your camera, please do it now. Okay. Yes, everyone. Please turn on your camera if you're already in front of your camera. Okay, so I will start counting. One, two, three. Okay, perhaps once more. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, now everyone, we have reached the core of the event that has been anticipated, which is the delivery of our topic, Presidential Inaugural Address, the Current Trace of American Civilization, by our speaker today, Professor Dr. Mr. Gideon Maru M. Hung, which will be guided by our moderator, Dr. Skanis Suryaning C. M. Hong. Over to you, Buyaning. Thank you, Ibu Tias, for the lovely opening, and also Professor Alam Shah, who has already uh, opened this uh, webinar. Welcome, quote unquote, in Sumarang, Prof. Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Karni. Yeah. Um, good morning, students, participants, and all Zoomers. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet all of you in this great opportunity in this very interesting webinar held by English Department of Bangalore University. Uh, I call it interesting because uh, how the topic about presidency is very relevant with uh, our nowadays situations. Outside this forum, the news about um, Indonesia's presidential candidacy is very happening, hot, dynamic. Uh -huh. uh, but we will not deal with that. Yeah? Something across the Atlantic Oceans that is the presidency, United States of America. Well, it is our pleasure to have Professor Dr. Mr. Gideon Maru Enghum from Universitas Negeri Manado, who will share valuable knowledge and perspective about presidential inaugural address. Before we proceed to listen to his presentations, uh, let me introduce Professor Gideon first. Uh, Professor Gideon finished his bachelor degree from English department at Jamanda University in 1998, and then graduated uh, his master degree, seemingly from the information. It seems that uh, he graduated this master degree in a blink of eye, <laughs> the fastest one with the GPA four, outstanding, fantastic. 
and also graduated from doctorate degree from American Studies Kajamudu University. From uh, the curriculum period, I find that Professor Pidian has already published seven Scopus articles and CAT study for a high index, quite high. And then also he is active as a journal reviewer, international journal reviewer, like Kauken Journal International reviewer, and then Sinta also. Sinta uh, Journal Reviewer. He is also academic reviewer for LPDP uh, Kementerian Keuangan. And then, and many other uh, achievements. It is, uh, what can I say? Mm -hmm. This is very outstanding, Professor Gideon. Okay, without further ado, uh, I would like to give the time and screens to Professor Gideon. Um, let's say we have around 45 minutes or more or less one hour to listen to this uh, general lecture on visiting Professor from Professor Gideon. Yeah, please, Professor Gideon. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh... Um, moderator, uh, uh, Dr. Sukarni, uh, it is a privilege for me, it is an honor for me to be uh, with this um, big team as Mas uh, Parido uh, uh, informed me or last time, and I think it is uh, it is a rare occasion, and I feel like it's. It's an honor again. So again, thank you so much, uh, uh, the team, the committee. I heard uh, Professor Alamsa uh, for the wonderful remarks and uh, welcoming remarks. And the team, I sorry, I uh, maybe uh, I'm not uh, good at catching the names. Like uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Chatur or others and the lecturers. Uh, uh, the departments, the chairs of the departments, the secretary and the, the study program. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and of course, the beloved students, thank you for attending this um, uh, online uh, class. And I just glance and it seems that um, it's quite uh, quite many students are here. And I, I think it's, again, I feel like I'm being wonderfully welcome. So, um, uh, Ibu, Ibu Dr. Sukarni, thank you again mm -hmm. for the, the opening. Yes. Uh, I'm not that good okay, as the CV. So. Sometimes the CV looks uh, better than, than no. the real one. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, uh, my, yeah. Um, uh, thank you for reading my name, Mr. Gideon Maru. Mr. is a name. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just fun. Yeah, yeah. Some of friends make fun of that. <laughs> it, it's a name. So, uh, uh, Mister. Uh, so when I go abroad, it's it's always become a joke in in um, uh, the officers. Uh, they keep on asking why why it is Mister. It's yeah, it's a name. I don't know, but uh, maybe my parents have already prophesied that uh, one day I'll be in a, a lecturer in English department. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, Masarida knows it so well. Okay. Oh well. Uh, um. Yeah. As Ibu, uh, Dr. Sugani just uh, said today, uh, the discussion uh, related to presidential uh, uh, things is is always interesting. Uh, so uh, hopefully you will enjoy. Uh, what we'll have today. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I hope I, sorry, I, I hope I can uh, answer some of your curiosity uh, related to this uh, issue, Presidential Nagro addressed uh, the current trace of American uh, civilization. Uh, yeah. 
all the discussion I, I think this is this is uh something always relevant to the english uh, literature english department so we discuss uh, all issues about uh, american or or literature english literature we cannot ignore we cannot avoid of discussing the existence of uh, american uh, civilization american culture american mind american experience uh, all those uh, related to the uh, existence of american we cannot deny the influence of this uh, big country so hopefully the discussion today we will share uh, one another okay. I, I will hope also will hope some some input some questions from students or some uh, suggestions uh, after the discussion and maybe from some of the lecturers if any uh, well uh, <clears throat> the discussions in american civilization uh, cannot be um uh, let go from understanding what is actually the American civilization itself. So before we go further, I think it is better for us to have a glance at what is actually American civilization. Yeah, of course, there is no well, fixed or firm uh, definitions what is American civilization. Uh, I heard from the Professor Alam said that uh, in um, in UNDIP, uh, there is um, Kajian America or American Studies uh, as one of the students' interest for the English department. So <clears throat> here, uh, I try to provide with uh, some uh, definite, some understanding on American civilization. And the first one is uh, American civilization is viewed as part of the advanced society, yeah, which occupies a specific ge geographical space, in this case, the America or US, that has been settled historically by many different people. Its contributory culture illustrate distinctive, yeah, yeah, distinctive com but complex way of life. So the, the key words there is that it advanced society and it related to the way of life. So uh, this should be, the colors of understanding when we we are thinking, when we are uh, dealing with the issues of American civilization. This is according to Mock uh, and Auckland. And the other thing is that it is related to the features of American civilization, the features of diversity. I think we, we for, the, for American studies uh, scholars or for English department scholars, this is quite familiar. The diversity in America, the the ethnic ethnicity, the people, and uh, the multi faith. The second aspect is the multi faith means multi religious pluralisms, and also the uh, the third is the economic uh, activities, yeah, the economic uh, uh, interactions, which uh, comprise uh, with competition and production. And then the uh, fifth is the media culture, and of the sixth is the culture expression. So all these features, if we attach them uh, to American life, we we may call them American civilization. And the other understanding related to this is that uh, it is something to the way uh, America see themselves in the way they think, not in the way. The outsiders things like us so it is um part of self view yeah how they see themselves uh it, it's a civilization itself but it, it is ways it's why sometimes we we have a quite different um uh, view on this we sometimes we we are trapped in in the american paradox and uh for uh, perspective related to the american civilization it is a subject. It is part of the academic um, subjects, yeah. Or sometimes it's also in some universities, academic. Uh, um, it is a department, not a, It's a department in some universities, and uh, like in, uh, for example, in Universitas Gemada, like where 
now I'm also involved in as part of a teaching team for master program. Uh, it is a subject, it's American civilization. So American civilization uh, could also be a subject in a certain department. But here today, I think we better focus on the first uh, uh, understanding that it is a, it's a part of an advanced society with a distinct way of life. So this is the baseline for our understanding today. So before we go further, we we discuss further. This is it has to be uh, kept in our mind that this today that sorry that today. Um, the American civilizations we try to um, discuss is that it's related to the to the advanced society with the way of life in occupying America. So that's why we call American uh, civilization. And <clears throat> uh, the discussions on American civilization, according to uh, uh, Hypo, uh, he argued that the cradle of American civilization has often been located in New England settlement. So again, I think this is this is not a new issue. This is a very classic issue for English department students. I think it is yeah something something not new anymore for uh, especially for the Americans uh, uh, study students. The New England settlement. Yeah, that was the cradle, that was the baseline, that was the root, that was the foundation of the American civilization today. So, so again, keep in mind that the topic, our, our topic today is the inaugural address, presidential inaugural address, as the trace of the American civilization. But uh, at a, this very beginning, we have to uh, set up our mind that this uh, synthesis that the American civilization started or cannot be um, uh, denied that it began yeah, in the New England settlement. And when we talk about this, the issue of New England settlement, we cannot also uh, avoid of issue of, of um, telling stories or recalling uh, a history, point of history of Mayflower, yeah, two, two uh, ships that carries the uh, religious uh, dissenters called pilgrims, and also the other ships, the Arbella, the pilgrims was here. I, I just tried to list some some facts related to the pilgrims that is carried or in Mayflower. I think we know that uh uh, so clear that in the 1620, uh, uh, Mayflower arrived in Plymouth, yeah, the separatists. Uh, they <laughs> arrived there as after the long trip from crossing Atlantic from uh, England for looking for the uh, uh, new world. Yeah, yeah. they came. Uh, uh, so, uh, passengers for the um, Mayflower, yeah, the one or two passengers at a time, with 41 of them uh, are the pilgrims or religious dissenters, and the rest are they call strangers. Uh, they are separatists, they are looking for area for land for the new world where they can practice their religious as they believed. and. The leaders, uh, the first was John Carver, but uh, he uh, he died not long after that, and so the 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 governor was taken or given to William Bradford. What is important in Mayflower is come uh, uh, Cummings arrival in the uh, in the climate is that the existence of Mayflower come back. So I think if we read the uh, climate plantations, if we read uh, that uh, notes, we'll see how this Mayflower compact becomes one of uh, a cornerstone for the existence of America today. Later, we'll see how this Mayflower compact becomes significant for the American uh, civilization today. So again, the, the, the American civilization 
start one of which is starting from the comings of the pilgrims in 16 2020 and the other uh, issues which is also relevant related to new england settlement is the arrival of the 10 years after that 1630 in the ships of arbella actually there are four ships at the time but the most uh, me mostly mentioned um, ship was the arbella where the governor john winter before leaving the ship he delivered his uh, remarkable and his um, monumental uh, speech entitled a model for christian charity which is also very significant for the american life today so uh, the, the arrival of these uh, fleet, uh, these ships, uh, marks the beginning of American civilization. Some traditions are built, are introduced, were introduced by uh, the coming of these two groups of pilgrims and Puritans. Yeah, in some ways they are used interchangeably, but actually they are quite dis uh, distinctive, quite different. Uh, pilgrims are separatists, but Puritans are non-separatists, and uh, Puritans are mostly uh, influenced by the Calvinism. Well, later we see them in the ethics of Protestantism, which lay uh, out the foundations of American capitalism. Um, so uh, the, the questions uh, following this uh, uh, phenomena is that what civilization did the ship carry? So we are trying to steep uh, still uh, focusing on the, the idea of civilization itself. So these two ships, the, the coming of these two ships yeah, by their leaders, Win uh, Bradford and Winthrop, uh, they laid the foundation of the first one, the significance of what issues they still um, influential for American today is that the seats those uh those ships especially mayflower it becomes the seeds of american democracy it's the it uh put down the seeds of american democracy we know if we look back look read the uh, the content of the mayflower uh, the mayflower compact mayflower compact is the compact uh, is the agreement uh, which was signed uh, after the arrival of the uh, passengers of Mayflower the, for the purpose of just an equal life in a new colony. And it was civil body politics. So it's a kind of foundation for the self-government in the new world. So when they signed the compact, the Mayflower compact, actually they lay down the seats or they introduced the first American democracy. And if you know, uh, we have the magistrate there, how these, this compact was later practiced by the election process. Governor Bradford were elected for 30 times during the existence in the new world. So the Mayflower itself, Mayflower compact itself, uh, bring very important uh, contribution to the American democracy as the example or as the first frame of democracy in the new world. Yeah. And the other is that the arrival of the existence of new, the New England settlement also related to the, the existence of the American myth. If we look at the, um, the uh, speech um, John Winthrop, We'll see at the end of that, we have a very uh, well-known uh, quotations that related to the terminology, for we must consider that we are a city upon a hill. All the eyes are upon us. That is considered that America see themselves. We have exceptionalisms. It was the American myth. It was the root of the American myth. Yeah, myth is the way America see themselves, yeah? how they are, how they live ideologically, religiously, culturally is the myth within America. So the 
speech delivered by winter of mod a model for Christian charity does not last only at a time but it goes until today so that's why we have the American myth and the other significance of what is for civilization for American civilization is the arrival of the pilgrims the Puritans with their fleet with the people with, the, with them is um, the foundation of the narrative of the new world right? the promised land we have American promise the chosen this narrative is related to the way the, the pilgrims the Puritan see themselves as people part of the biblical biblical community well they are assigned with a certain mission from the old world to the new world to the to the promised land to the new world where they can have a better life by practicing their religious belief so this the arrival of this um people from new england with their belief as whether it is pilgrim or uh, Puritans, it's, it introduces with the narrative, the biblical narrative of the new world, old world to the new world, the promised land, uh, the chosen yeah, related to the covenant between the divine and the people, yeah, God and his people, uh, uh, in accordance with, with the, the journey from Egypt to the new world. Yeah, so they they assume themselves they were in in the part of that story, which still we can be traced today, and later we'll see that in an outgo addressed. And the other is that uh, we have the American ethics, yeah, the American uh, ethics. I think we now we are familiar. Some of you maybe have already read the Max Weber, not the Max Weber's book, the ethics of protestantism and the spirit of capitalism there it is all about the idea of calling how the weber lays the foundations of his ideology by 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 uh, connecting the idea of calvinism on the idea of work to work is to glorify god so when they see that um the economic activity is a part of glorify God. So it is a future. Yeah, it's something, it is the truth. Someone has a calling for a better life. That's why we have the pursuit of happiness. We, we see uh, the American life, people, yeah, we have American dream, but the the the, the basic for that, for that was the calling to be um, a meaningful life by having uh, profit and uh, material success. And then material success is seen as the God signs of favor. So God's favor is seen from the material success. That was the idea of um, the, the uh, American ethics according to uh, Max Weber. And then most, much more important was related with, with our discussion today is the existence of political sermon tradition. Why it is called political sermon? Because this sermon is delivered by a, le by a political leader. Both Bradford and Winthrop, they are actually governor, or in that sense, they are political leaders. But if we look, if we uh, yeah observe uh, deeper from uh, the way they uh, um, govern and from their speeches, we will see that how they use the the religious uh, excerpts, religious doctrines, religious teachings to organize his people like a model for Christian charity. It's it sounds like very religious model for Christian charity, but actually the content is very politics because it organized people. It tried to manage people. Okay, And the same is true with the uh, Mayflower Compact. Mayflower Compact is, it also, uh, it also 
uh, convince people yeah, to live in accordance with God ordinance. So the idea is still religious, but actually the, the, the end of that is that how to live peacefully in new land, how to live peacefully in new world. So this is a sermon, but in the other sense, it's also very political. And these traditions are uh, becoming the color of a later uh, rhetoric of American leaders. That's what we'll see today. So, sorry, I jump up to the president's inaugural address. Okay, before, yeah, to our, to our topic today. But keep in mind that the political tradition, the, the idea of political traditions, um, before we connect them, the political traditions in um, as a part of the, the, the civilizations, the early American, let's see what is presidential inaugural address. Some, uh, some few, some insights are given uh, related to this. Yeah, uh, Tulin, for example, Cynthia Tulin, he, she said, Press in in times of delivering inaugural address, presidents give their official statement of how they view the national situations, frequently citing a cultural core or civil religion for legitimation. So the idea that is there is that presidential inaugural actually is not so different from what is practice what is carried out by both Bradford and Winthrop. They also cite the cult, the civil religion, the cultural cores yeah, as a part of the public audience. Yeah. Uh, pu sorry, public audience. So it's the public perform first public performance. If um, Bradford Firstly, before he touch the land in the world, he makes sure everyone are bounded in a civil body politics named Mayflower Compact. Winthrop, before leaving the ship, he announced or he delivered the model of Christian charity. This is this is part of actually part of public uh, a, a way of a winning public's heart. A legitimation, a legitimations to um, manage people, to organize people, and <clears throat> similar uh, similar opinion um, from Rockland and Cook, John Rockland and Cook. They said, at moment like this, speaker means presidents address audience about the values that both share members of common group. The speeches given at such moments are thus non-controversial. For specific audience, they do not urge for adoption of new values or rejection of old values. That means that in times of inaugural address uh, delivery, uh, the moment of delivering the uh, inaugural address, it's all about commonly shared values. It is not something new. It's something that has already been preserved for so long had been exist for so long. And it is, uh, I think it is uh, well concluded by um, Wolf that why it is it can be done because president has a prerogative to speak the people's mind and the great issues of his time and to serve the spokesman for the real sentiment and purpose of the country. So when we look at the inaugural dress, we are not looking at the emptiness. We are looking at the situation, at the condition, the context, the circumstances, which are relevant to the people's life, to the con context of the time. <clears throat> okay. Um, here, uh, I try to share with you the... Uh, nature of inaugural address. Yeah. The inaugural address, which is related to the transfer of power, related to the unity of the nation and the directions of the nation, it has four uh, main characteristics. 
Yeah. If we look at the inaugural dress, we have the first is lofty. Lofty means something sublime, something glorifying, something live in the people's mind. That something can glorify people, something uh, can enrich, enhance, and also encourage people. And the other is that uh, it is non-partisan. Means when a, someone become leader, a president, it belongs to no party anymore. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be so. Yeah? It has no uh, attachment to a particular party. Yeah. Ideally, yeah. We know that in America we have uh, two dominant parties: Rep Republic and Democrat. Uh, but in times of inaugurals. The a president has to try or must try to avoid this image that he is part of only or merely on certain uh, party. It has to be part of the um, inaugural itself. And then visionary. A visionary, of course, it's it means with what vision the president carries, what vision the president offers to people that's why in inaugural address we mostly heard promises frame of promises a president keep promising what he's going to do in his tenure what he's going to do after his really take the office and very important thing is that inaugural address is cl uh, closely or relate or reflects the basic principle the basic principle means or refers to the values refers to the perspective, refers to the insight of the people, the common share values in America, in people's life. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so it should be part of the uh, uh, Americans' life. So uh, inaugural address, is there with the with the people means it's it's a the pictures of his people's life it's a pictures of the way of life okay now is what about the structure so <clears throat> if we look back at the political sermon and now we look at the structure this is the, the this is the structure of inaugural address, the current inaugural address. In the left side, if you look at your screen on the left side, if <clears throat> actually I have already shortened it, yeah. If you maybe if you have time, you may look at all of the inaugural address from Washington uh, from uh, um, uh, the first American presidents till Biden. You will see that in general. They they will provide us with this rhetorical structure. The first one, most of the president in their inaugural address, they will try to identify what what is the situation. Sorry, some words are missing there. So if you're identifying the situation, problems, or the crisis, and its causes. Sorry, uh, yeah. It should be not yeah blaming blaming in the sense if blaming here actually refers to if the presidents um it is a newly elected presidents he usually blaming the the previous presidents but if it is the second term usually he's he performs a different uh, rhetorical structure but still identify the problem the second structure is usually presidents referring to the founding values of glories, yeah, biblical uh, inspiration, or sometimes uh, um, heroic um, narratives. Yeah. That's the second structure. And the third is asking people to redeem, to keep the, the covenant yeah, of the promise, a better man. Yeah, uh, yeah I provided some, some example from several last uh, last president's yeah, inaugural address. So this is the structure. But if you look at the uh, right-hand side, yeah, 
uh, we will see there some some yeah uh, uh, quite big uh, say box there uh, lamenting the present i wrote down there lamenting the present condition evoking the past calling renewal those three is actually the pattern the structure of what we call jeremiah jeremiah is the political sermon the name for the political sermon the leaper by winthrop and Bradford. The idea is the same. Lamenting the present condition means that at a time, at the Winthrop's and Bradford time, or the leaders after that, they try to lament. Lament means they try to see, they, uh, they are disappointed with the situation at the time. Like um, they see the problem as the fruit or the problem, the suffering, as the cons the consequence of life which is not obedient for a defined uh, doctrine, yeah, for biblical preserves or prescription. Okay, so <clears throat> it is in juxtaposing position with the identifying problem in modern inaugural address. And then evoking the past, the idea is similar. If evoking the past means it try to reverse, provide the solution for uh, the problem at hand, problem today, the current problem, with by referring to the values, to the heroic figures, to um, share uh, culture perspective, culture belief, or the myth that become a solution uh, for the current problem, for the identified problem. So <clears throat> they are similar uh, to the to the practice carried out by present uh, presidents, American president. Sorry, even by Biden. That's why I put Biden's um, pictures there. Okay, and the last is if the present. Uh, or the current American presidents uh, put down asking to redeem in Puritan's Jeremiah or in the early American civilization's Jeremiah, they call it calling for renewal. So it's called, so it's a calling, it's, um, it, it's an attempt to remind people that they need to repent, they need to repent they need to return to the value so they can have we can enjoy a better life anymore a prospective life uh, a pro sorry a prosperous life a happy life uh, as long as they return to the values as long as they do the what is already been a folk yeah, or had it been recalled yeah, from the past from the value so we see that the structure, the trace of the first or the early American civilization can also be traced now in the rhetorical structure of inaugural address. So we see this the similarity, the, the terminology is quite different, but the structure is quite similar. So the the <clears throat> the um what was practiced in the early Americans settlement can also be seen now, can also be traced, can also be detected in the present structure of inaugural address. And here we need to understand that this structure does not come from vacuum or does not, sorry, it's really does not come from, not does not from, but the structure does not come from vacuum. It's not related from uh, context. So a president identifies crisis, crisis its causes, and uh, uh, another uh, circumstances related to that. It's all about the context, what happens today. So when we look at inaugural address, we actually see what is happening right now.
Okay? What issues are offered, what issues are being experienced by people, by American people. Okay? So uh, this is this is the this is the relation. So if uh, the the leaders of the past they also uh, identifies problem at a time, okay, and then they offer the solution, and then they recall for they recall people for change in order to regain the success. It the same thing that is practiced by the current presidents. So the the relations of the civilization itself is traced, is sinned. Yeah. Okay. So I think before uh, it gets more, I think it's better to, uh, to give chance for questions before I go further with uh, Ibu, uh, Dr. Sukarni, if if possible, can we give students some quest some times for asking questions? You know, I'm afraid okay. if everyone gets sleepy after listening these uh, several <laughs> slides. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are some slides uh, left, but I think let give some, uh, some minutes for. There are yeah, thank you. There are uh, I believe we have. Still a lot of uh, let's see what is it called um many more slides but seemingly Mr. Gideon would like us to have uh, discussions who knows that uh, we can share each other knowledge uh I find there are three important points from uh, the explanations yeah uh from historical background political ceremony during early settlements becomes let's say becomes the root of modern US presidential inaccurate address. Is that so, uh, Professor Gideon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is very interesting. We welcome the participants to uh, give opinion, and questions, or let's say, yeah, some of ideas that might, might uh, Sparks in our mind concerning about this this issue, and uh, you may uh, open your mic and or uh, write down the the questions in the chat box. Please do so. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, while waiting for the um, participant, I would like to have a small explanation, maybe, about something that, uh, let's say, uh, is that so presidential address in this case? Is it a kind of uh, a, a meeting point? Is that so between, let's say, um, presidential presidents? values and his people's values. What do you think about, about, about this? Yeah. Um, thank you, Dr. Sukarni. Then that's oh, very good questions. Yeah. Um in <clears throat> American history, but and I think it's not only in American history, it's not only in American politics, but it might be Indonesian's politics, then Inaugural address is, as you said, is it's is the first meeting point. It's the first audition for the presidents with his people, with the public, after being elected. So um, formally, he take the office is marked by the delivery of the address. So mm -hmm. uh, it is why that this. Inaugural address is different from other types of speech. In American uh, politics, they have a, a, in, uh, four main uh, uh, types of speech. Uh, that is say, the um, nomination uh, speech. It's usually given mm -hmm. for, it's usually delivered by um, a president's candidate, yeah, candidate uh, when mm -hmm. he's uh, uh, nominated. Yeah. and he's he's nominating himself and then 
he delivers physical nom uh, nominating speech and then they also have acceptance speech when the the pol the party uh nominate him then uh he accept that nomination as a president as president candidate so are ready to compete for the uh, presidential uh contest and then you have acceptance speech and then the uh, most the other most important uh, sorry mo, uh, the other uh, speech is this inaugural address which marks mm -hmm. the transitions of power marks the um, the celebrations of democracy itself where uh, the process of democracy has ended and now they start a new process with a new presidency okay and this new leader this new uh, symbolic leader and also executive leader will try to win people's heart for the first time in this inaugural in the words yeah um of his inaugural and the, uh, the third actually sorry, the fourth speech is the state of the union speech it is it is a speech before the uh, uh american parliament it is more more political and uh more uh realistic uh speech it goes uh with how how sorry it it it, it is designed to win or to uh, to pass policies of a new presidency mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so in going back to this inaugural address oh well, inaugural address is a moment as, so if we look at the every January 20, we will see that uh, how people gather there. I think not only Americans are waiting for the inaugural address. Even uh, the people of the world are waiting uh, what is being said by the new president. Uh, what he will say about domestic issue, about international issue. Um, uh, what is... Um, offered to people what promises are offered to people and how they will address uh, certain uh, or current problem uh, current like the last time uh, for, uh, both uh, uh, sorry Biden for example the ease is happening at the time and he tried to address them but not specifically as a policy since policy will be heard in the state of the yeah. union before the parliament. Mm -hmm. I think and then what mm -hmm. I can uh, say Ibu Dr. Scott. That's this is very interesting. So it means uh, a president of the United States uh, they got a chance uh, at least three times to deliver his ideas before then being chosen as the president of the US. And uh, the last one is the, the, the inaugural address on um, the you mentioned in January. Yeah, January 20, you saw general elections. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, then we have uh, one question here from from Kidot. This is the alumnus of American Studies 2015. I would like to ask Professor Mari about the, uh, is it about uh, President Reagan spoke in news conference at the famous quote the rhyme let me see the time most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government and I'm here to help the speed had some key feature as follows. Uh, government creates impredictability due to constantly changing policies. The government goes sometimes to align with national goals. Uh, question is in translation perspective, how do you see the government in consistency oh. in the context of Indonesia. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Gideon. Yeah, yeah. It is interesting, yeah. Uh, Reagan is one of, uh, said is one of uh, rhetoric presidents. One, uh, well, he's well known for his rhetoric as Obama. So, mm -hmm. uh, both Reagan, Obama, and Roosevelt, they are well known, uh, sorry, Kennedy, they are uh, well known for their rhetorics, the power of the rhetorics. So mm -hmm. Reagan is, an, uh, is a former actress, he's just an actor, yeah. Uh, he's he's mm -hmm. very good, mm -hmm. he's very good at using uh, words. And um, discussing about inconsistency uh, of the leaders, the 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 idea is that uh, if you if you uh, read for example uh, Obama's book book like winning people's heart yeah or uh, mm -hmm. or Reagan as rhetoric presidents uh, you will see that um, uh, I try to still uh, uh, focus on on the inaugural address related to that that the go the government is president is assumed as the trumpet of society. This terminology using president is a public trumpet. So he's, he's, he try to figure out what is happening in the society. That's why I said that the content of a speech, as you said, the three speech like accepting, nominating, and inaugural address, those three speeches does not, uh, uh, or it, it is not, uh, related to emptiness or without context, zero context. It always related to certain context. And then presidents, by adjusting themselves with all the raising issues. And the, the, the real evaluation, actually, of the, of the presidential tendency Certain uh, presidential uh, tendency is that in the State of the Union speech, because there is the policy, because there is a formal or legal um, regulation uh, uh, action that will be taken by a new president or of or the running presidents. In our but, context, maybe is it like uh, the the speech in sixteenth of August? Yeah, yes, yes, mostly like that. Yeah, yeah. so promise like can I can get the Yeah, yeah, it will be done in tanggal enam belas Agustus. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that's the State of the Union. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we sometimes we heard in America like uh, uh, kebangkrutan bankruptcy a year mm -hmm. for uh, tahun mm -hmm. anggaran. It's usually done in the in the front of uh, parliament and it was the state of the union that's not the uh, inaugural address because inaugural is a different yeah. characteristic mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's more cultural mm -hmm. rather than uh, mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. even though the moment mm -hmm. is politics that's why i said it's still a kind of political sermon so it's mm -hmm. sermon in some ways mm -hmm. but it has the uh, moment of uh, politics. So, like, uh, mm -hmm. why Reagan seems inconsistent? Yeah, because we need. Uh, it's interesting, actually, as um, focus for research for students. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't the students try to see the consistency of president's work on certain issues, from mm -hmm. uh, uh, acceptance to a state of the union, from the promise to the action? How they are consistent, or and actually in America they also have a farewell speech. Presidents usually deliver a farewell speech at the end of his uh, uh, tenure, his presidency. He will also uh, uh, speak uh, as mm -hmm. a kind of farewell for his people. I think mm -hmm. it might be a topic to discuss um, for English department yeah. students. That maybe could be the language. It could be how the constructions of the language. Or or maybe the content or what would be the 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 uh, uh, metaphors used or maybe all those uh, related to the to the expressions how they express themselves uh, even what issues are consistently broke uh, during um, the deliverance of those different uh, speeches. So coming back to the idea of inaugural address, so uh, you mentioned earlier that um, uh, 
this is more like uh, having quote unquote uh, political education uh, to the to the to the people of the U.S. because uh, in this in this speech or in this address, the chosen president. Uh, they 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 want to remind the society about uh, what is happening in the past, what is the values of American society, and what is happening in in that moment, and what uh, this is like uh, the collide between what is happening in the past and um, what is in the right now USA at the moment, and what is the future that they are going to. Uh, pursue together yeah uh, very uh, yeah very complete I guess for the inaugural address but complete in a way this is about social and cultural aspects of the society and whenever we come to the understanding of uh, let's say address in front of the state union then it will be much in detail of how the government will do the, the policy on certain uh, programs. Mm -hmm. That's what I can learn from your explanations of Gideon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. I, I think you, you summarized it so well, uh, Dr. Sukhani. Yeah. If we actually, if we, we go deeper in the context of American uh, studies, mm -hmm. or here it's the context of past, present, and future. So mm -hmm. the in uh, the the intertense, uh, the understanding is not only in one tense, but it's it is past. When we talk about the i the the uh, uh, identifications, the the way to identify the the current problem, the current issues, um, by the presidents, by he present. The issues, what is experienced by people now, it is actually it's it's the present situations. Uh, that's why I said when we look at the inaugural address, we look at the issues there. We are looking at the current issues, what is happening because president is talking about what is what is um, uh, being faced by, be held by people. And then at the same time, he take people goes back. To what we have already uh, gone through, okay. what we have already passed, we have already may have already passed some glories, some victories, by relying on certain values, by relying on certain narratives, by relying on uh, certain mythology, American myth that we see. We have already uh, like in times of COVID, for example. Biden keep on saying that we have already passed, or Trump in different uh, uh, speeches also referring that they have already gone some various turmoils, uh, crises, conflicts, but they still exist. At the same time, that was passed, and then they they face the future. The future, uh, I think most Americans are optimistic with an American dream. The future provides more promising life. The pursuit of happiness uh, are in that tracks. So if we look at the future, we have to optimistic. That's why if we look the, at the, um, um, the, the content, later I will show you some, I just quote some parts of Biden's uh, inaugural address. Um, the structure, we, they use, I will, we will, mostly will, I will, uh, I will ask you, I ask people. So it's kind of uh, asking people to look back at themselves and focus on the future. So the idea in American studies of past, present, and future is actually uh, traced in or traceable or detectable in an adult dress. And at the same time, this the situation, the portrait of people's situations at the time of uh, speech uh, the difference are also seen. So we we'll look at this, the text of the inaugural address. Actually, we are looking at the American life. We are looking at the civilization itself. What is the way of life? What is happening in America? 
So mm-hmm. those uh, s- uh, small, sorry, short uh, records yeah, can mm-hmm. also be meaningful to understand a big design of life mm-hmm. in America. In America. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, is it possible to uh, yes. go on with the yes, uh, yes. Next I just slide, like Professor Gideon? Yes. Yeah. This okay. is very interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me con- uh, continue with the uh, next slide. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, here I try to um show you uh share with you all the uh um uh, lines some lines from biden's as the last presidents uh oh sorry yeah yeah some lines from biden's uh <clears throat> um inaugural address this is the line from uh, i tried to sorry I forget to write down. It should be economy, politics, social, uh, culture, and uh, social. So the rest, uh, the rest, uh, the two uh, boxes rest uh, belongs to culture and uh, social. So let me quote from in economic frames. The, he said in his inaugural address, "We can put people to work in good jobs." Remember the the context here. Yeah? This economic uh, line uh, from this uh, in his inaugural address. If you look at this, it reminds of us of the problem uh, rela- uh, related to. Remember that uh, Biden was inaugurated in times of COVID in twenty twenty one. So at the time, the situation people are very uh, desperate with the looking for a job. And then that's what he said. We can put people to work in good job. So it's it's something um love, something lofty, something glorifying, something encouraging people. And it has to be done by president amidst the difficult situations. Uh, pro- uh, giving promise, it's it's nice to hear a promise. Uh, I think that's a very classic theory. We love to hear promises, whether or not it is it will be uh, uh kept or not, or not popular or not <laughs> but, but it's still a we promise, love to hear <laughs> promise and dream yeah. at the same time yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so it's a promise and then uh, you said we can reward work rebuild the middle class and make health care secure for all again so it is there are actually there are many lines relevant to this but i just got uh for for uh, time consideration. I just quote these two lines. Uh, it's related to work, yeah, related to to middle class, to healthcare uh, issue, yeah, so healthcare security. So all this has to come out from the mouth of a leader at the inaugural address because he's trying to unify people, to unify people, try to gather people as a one force to go ahead. It it has to be done. Yeah. So it is the, the lines of the inaugural address itself, first picturing what what is what the situation is being faced by the people. And at the same time, president provide with the promise, a solution. They saw the identification, and then he tried to find, to give them solution. Yeah. We we can reward work. Yeah. And later in we will, some part, we'll see how a president will also recall people to go back to their own values for later um, a better life. In politics, yeah. in politics, Biden saying, <clears throat> uh, and now as a rise in political extremism with white supremacy, domestic uh, terrorism that we must confront and we will defeat. This is the Biden presented or addressing at the time he was addressing the the inter the domestic issues. We, we I think we remember about the issues of the the racial issues at the time. Yeah, 
and then also about the terror. All these issues are alive in the people's mind. And Biden, as a leader, he uh, he need to address this. He need to identify this. Okay. So that's that's the ability, the competence of a president um, to um, to deal with or to cope with the current issues in living in his society. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why we cannot deny that most of the president they have their ghost writer, ghost writer, right? People who who act as or people who play the role as the writer for a uh, president's uh, speech we call them ghost writer uh, ghost writing uh, uh, practices and it, and it is it is um uh, it is okay in political sense that the president to have a go i think we have a very famous uh, ghost writer presidential uh, ghost writer like uh, nelson and we know their books, yeah. They are very well known mm -hmm. for their ability to when they mm -hmm. become a presidential uh, ghostwriter. And then <clears throat> we can. <clears throat> the other thing from the from Biden's uh, line is that we can make America once again the leading force for the good in the world. This is related to the idea of calling. Yeah, remember in the first uh, slide I mentioned something related to mission, to calling. So America see themselves as a part of uh, Puritan life. They have this calling. Everyone has a calling. Everyone has a duty, and one of their duty is they usually tend to um, assume themselves. They have a domestic mission, the domestic calling, and they have an international calling. That's for the peace of the world. Whether or not we like that each that terminology or not, but that's what they see themselves. Yeah, that, that's here. He said we are <clears throat> leading force for the good. So they, they this is related also to the extreme ex, exceptionalisms. Yeah, the 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 myth of American myth of to be number one. Every time they see themselves them number one. Yeah. If you, I think if some of uh, uh, if students here uh, learn about the American myth, they'll find beside the myth of Pocahontas, beside the myth of the Promised Land, you'll see that the myth of um, to be number one from wreck to riches, the, from luck cabin to the White House, yeah, all those uh, American myths. Uh, <clears throat> here they see themselves a leading force. So Biden again tried to to touch to connect himself with people's mind with people people's belief what is um belief by people about american existence and <clears throat> like the other line related to the politics here huh? yeah. here we stand just days after the righteous mobs remember at the time america was uh trapped in several or not several but multiple mobs though they could use violence to silence the will of the people, yeah. <clears throat> to stop the work of our democracy, and to drive us from this sacred ground. Sacred ground. So mob here also related to, you remember how Trump supporters come to the White House for protesting uh, Biden's uh, victory. Yeah. So all the issues are being addressed. It is issues at hands, the issues in front of their eyes. So reading inaugural address is like reading the um, Ameri America today, American today. Yeah, There is a newspaper in America named American Today. So like uh, what, what is the portrait of people at the time is usually try to be portrayed portray by the president as well. And they, they assume themselves they are living in the sacred ground. So it is, it's not apart from the context of the myth of the, the new world and the promised land. Yeah. And in the other box, so it should be culture. Sorry, I forget to um, write down the title. It should be culture. They <clears throat> said, we must end this uncivil war that 
pits red against the blues, rural versus urban, conservative versus liberal. So this is the ease, is the cultural perspective that at the time becomes the dilemma becomes the factors becomes the topic that people need to face every day that still the perspectives of people are conservative people are liberal and people are uh, rural and some are be some belong to or uh, part of the urban area urban uh, perspective and this is culture thing that has to be uh, dealt by a president a new president and the ability to deal with this these issues are a kind of a sort of a guarantee that the president knows well his people, and that means he has he has the potential to launch a proper or appropriate policy in his coming uh, presidency, and that means it guarantees people's happiness, people's prosperity, people's dream yeah as they uh, always see themselves uh, and he said before god and all of you i give you my word i will always level with you so again as i said they it's 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 difficult to see or it's rare to see that an agro address is yeah, apart yeah. from civil religion yeah from the eases of religious uh, uh things in their inaugural address they they there, there are still times they chip in ideas of uh religious uh, preserves so yeah it, it's it's quite paradox to say that yeah they are quite uh irreligious people but in the inaugural address we can trace that even in the the final part of the taking out uh, uh, moment, they said, "So help me God." So you know, this is this is uh, um, interesting, perplexing, and also uh, interesting. I think. Uh, and then in the social idea uh, frames that in Biden's lines of um, inaugural address, he also addressed, "We can teach our children." In safe school, I think we remember at the time. Also, there is a, a debate discussions on how school is sorry how how children are treated in school. And in Obama left the policy of um, freedom of religious freedom by um, putting away all the uh, religious symbol symbols from. Um, public schools, for example. So this is an issue at the time. And here, Biden also, we can overcome this deadly virus. Of course, we know about this. This is something related to uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So it is social issues that the presidents need to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, address at the time. And then racial injustices uh, and also uh, uh, related to how the old American and the difficult and he said, my fellow Americans in the work ahead of us, we will niche each other. I think I think pa, pa Arido remember uh, where Professor Johertati once uh, introduced us with the idea of American voluntarism, voluntarism, yeah. Uh, help thy thy fellow, if you're not mistaken, and thy neighbors, sorry, help thy neighbors. It yeah, means at a time when they are going west for the best. They keep on helping one another. And that was the spirit of voluntarism, according to Professor Johertati at the time. So it was helping each other. Uh, this is the, the voluntarism spirit that is still uh, um, uh, awakened by or reawakened by uh, Biden, by touching the idea that people are in need uh, one another. So... Yeah, like the yeah, uh, people are going for frontier and then going best for the best, going west for the best. Uh, they need to help one another. It was voluntarism. I think uh, I remember that was part of 
the late uh, and respect, uh, respected Ibu Tati, uh, Professor Chair Tati's uh, uh, subject. Yeah, I think Ibu, Ibu Sukani is laughing at that. <laughs> In part of the memory, yeah, pa, Masari, pa Arido, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a kind of final part of this uh, slide. So if we look, if we're going back to our topic, the discussion that inaugural dress is a trace of, uh, current trace of American uh, civilization. Here we have uh, some, uh, some timelines here. Remember 1620 was Mayflower, lays the foundations of American democracy today and all of the civil body politics, the East, the religious issues. And the Arbella here, the 1630, related to the model of Christian charity, American myth, the um, uh, the narrative, American narrative today, the American ethics, and then 1776 is American independence, and and look at the uh, today uh, the last was the Biden's inaugural address. It was um, 2021. But we can still trace the American experience and the American mind and the pursuit of happiness. So when we, uh, the, if we can say that we can if synthesize that the inaugural itself, inaugural address itself can be seen is the trace, the current trace of the American mind, American experience. The pursuit of happiness, or some people say it is kind of a mental evidence that the American civilization can be traced by having le by learn by learning the inaugural dress. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, that's all, Ibu Doctor uh, Sukarni, and I'm open for any questions or suggestions. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Gideon. Such a comprehensive explanations, uh, ranging from the historical background of uh, inaugural address and uh, the significance of uh, seeing or understanding American in the past to understand uh, what is in the inaugural address campaign. And this is very interesting. Uh, again, we welcome uh, to the participants to uh, raise hands or giving questions or comments concerning about these uh, interesting topics. You may uh, express it in Bahasa or in uh, English, yeah? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. Okay. Uh, Ibu Sukarni. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask some questions to Professor Gideon? Thank you for the opportunity given. And I would really be thankful to the presentations given from uh, Mr. Gideon. That was very enlightening presentations. And um, what it becomes my questions are dealing with the political preferences of the American. Regarding the inaugural um, address uh, that becomes our today's topic in terms of the perhaps the philosophical basis uh, how do the you know um, democrat presidential candidate uh, and the republican presidential candidate uh, uh, differ i mean uh, in terms of the philosophical basis of the presidential uh, speech and um, how would this might how would this give any future impacts to the uh, you know uh, presidential elections in the future? I mean, uh, is 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 there any significant impacts to the uh, to the future American presidential prospect when it comes to the presidential uh, speech? Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Pak Rifka Pratama, this is very interesting question, I guess, Professor Gideon. Yeah. Because yeah. if we look back to your explanation concerning about American myth, American ethic, which becomes something very principles among American society, 
and then uh, the two days or in modern era there is a democrat and republic will it uh, give any influence to the um, what is it called the yeah. presidential inaugural address yeah uh, thank you pa uh, rifka uh, uh, i'm sorry if i'm uh, i i call you with not uh, properly but uh, i just look at the name pa Rifka and uh, even I think about I don't think he was about Chandra, no. But if, <laughs> but if, uh, this very wonderful questions, awesome questions, and um, yeah, um, the inaugural address is delivered by a president, and a president cannot avoid himself to uh, sorry cannot cannot totally put himself apart from his attachment to his party platform. Yeah, In American uh, politics, both Republic and American, they share totally different party platform. So when they come to the public, it's very difficult for them to totally divide themselves or, 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 or sorry, or totally um deny their attachment to the party uh, platform in inaugural dress it is not easy but we can identify them since um all republican presidents we, we some uh, usually people call they are concerned more tend to be more conservatives the the most of the lines yeah um Fortunately, I I once researched uh, presidential uh, address from Reagan to Obama, which um, presented different president with a different party platform, different party background. Most of Republican presidents, yeah, like Reagan, Bush, okay, and then. Uh, Trump, they attach themselves to the idea of conservative, the the which usually mark by, by the lines quoting history. So if we look at the lines of the other address, the Republican candidate presidential mostly quoting history. They quoting the heroic figures the of the past they quote they're quoting the values of the early american they quote they keep on saying something like um mission and calling yeah they deep they uh referring solution for the present by quoting the values of the past okay so it's it's or um they try to revert the idea of introspection because spirit of introspection is one of the characteristics of the old values, the Puritan values, family values, all the Puritans. So they keep on talking about family values, okay? about how to live as a family that, and how this part of like spirit of introspection, how they introspect themselves. That was Republican. Okay? They, they keep on referring to that. To the old history, I think, uh, yeah, there are many lines about that. That means that, as pa, uh, Rivka said, that they cannot avoid of still attached to their uh, party platform. And then, Democrat, Democrat tend to, as some people say, tend to be liberal. But to the my to my observation. They tend to the terminology newness. If you look at the lines of the Democrat, they keep on saying a new things. We'll see many phrases starting with the word new. We'll start new, new, new. So if we look back and we learn about the platform of, of the party, we'll say yes, that the Democrat platform keep on saying something new, promising something new, a breakthrough. Relating on something new, liberalisms. So uh, we can still identify their plat 
uh, their party platform, their party background in inaugural address. Even though theoretically, theoretically said that inaugural address has to be unifying, has to be non-partisan, has to be visionary. But as uh, but the the root the root is still difficult to be denied, and how it uh, influence the coming presidential elections or um, political coming political um, moment situations. Um, I think in the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that there is a difference in rhetorical structure of a new elected president and a continuing president. A newly elected president, like um, Clinton defeated Bush, right? defeated Bush, when Clinton delivered his inaugural address, the the content structure of his inaugural address is a sort of blaming the problem today, the problem when he faces an inaugural address to the previous presidency. It was their fault, so they. That's why we take the office. And that this the that's the plan. This is the plan for my office. So every new elected president have the tendency to blame the source of the crisis, the sort of conflict problem for the previous presidents. But for continuing president, he's taking the second term of his presidency. For example, like Clinton for the second term, he doesn't he doesn't comment about previous presidency in terms of fault, in terms of mistake, but he praised his uh, presidency, his first term presidency, because he's like to impress people with his achievements for the new presidency. So, so I'm not sure whether it is um, strategy or not, but, but Rhetoric, rhetorically or structurally uh, it happens so uh, it's it's always uh, such tendency that arise so if if um, for example after Democrat and then will be we don't know this today Biden and Trump who is next but if Biden, say Biden win, for example, I, I have a little bit, uh, um, uh, I'm sure <laughs> that he will also praise his, his achievements in his first tenure. But if Trump's, I believe Trump will curse the, the first, uh, the Biden's uh, presidency. So uh, even though they start with, Thanking the previous president. Usually, they are thanking the pre uh, previous presidents for being uh, president for certain uh, times of presidency. But after that, they will identify the problem and then uh, they will address who should be blamed for that. So, um, I, as I said, I think the 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 inaugural address itself is actually uh, a time for socio-cultural sensitivity of a leader. And from this sensitivity, they, they can design the policy that they will later present it in the parliament as a policy. Another struggle for a new president. But the idea first is to win people's heart. Uh, I think that's what I can say, but, uh, Rivka. Thank you, uh, Professor Gideon. So I guess there are two uh, keywords in uh, Prof. Gideon's previous explanations. That is a uh, party platform, which is also part of that give influence to the inaugural address. And then uh, uh, the, the second thing I find here is 
uh, identifying the current uh, spirit or portrayal of uh, as society at the moment. And also, uh, you just mentioned about uh, how to cope with, with that. How to cope with that. Okay, we still have one more question from uh, Pak Arido Lasano. Yes. The screen is yours, Pak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ibu Dr. Sukarni. And uh, Prof. Gideon, uh, it is a very insightful uh, lecture today. And I am happy that we hear something from you uh, on our mind about how to uh, deal with the President's inaugural address. And because uh, some students are from the American uh, Studies Department, and also we have students from the anthropology and also some from the literature section. So uh, I would like to know whether you can, uh, Professor Gideon can give us um, a tips uh, how to deal all those uh, perspectives, possibilities uh, concerning uh, text analysis so that students can, uh, let's say, have a new way of, because I think uh, it will be very uh, challenging for students to start thinking of uh, new types of uh, writing uh, undergrad uh, thesis, Prof. Gideon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Arido. Very interesting questions. We come to the uh, uh, something that is will be beneficial for our students in a way how to see the American society and culture from the perspective of uh, such a presidential inaugural address. What do you think about that? Yeah, thank you, Ibu Dr. Sukarni. And um, that's why I admire Pa Arido, Mas Arido. Usually I call him Mas Marido, but <laughs> I call Pa Arido. But uh, that's why I admire him a lot. And I always afraid if he's asked questions, um <laughs> as my senior so uh, uh, <laughs> uh i'm 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 trying to predict what he's going to ask uh, but he's asked these uh, unpredictable questions uh, uh well uh, thank you for the questions uh, uh, senior this is i need to call him senior uh, yeah uh <clears throat> inaugural address uh, i think it's it's rich um sourced for um uh, research and can be approached i think by uh, many uh, theories and also uh, uh lit even literary approach because in in american literature i think if i, I forget the the book but i think if masarido remember in american corner they are, that um in american literature address uh, speeches is considered as a part of literary works. So that means it can be approached with uh, uh, by a literary approach. Um, what interesting first in in inaugural address, but I think it's also another address like as uh, mentioned earlier that we have nominating speech, uh, presidential nominating speech. Uh, the, if we like to see the 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 uh, the party platform as pa uh, Livka's question uh, questions we can see we can ease we can identify them in or we can deal with them we can easily see them in uh, acceptance and nomination or nominating uh, speech that that will be the spirit of the 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 party will be said Republican both Republican and Democrat can be easily said it can be a focus of research there and <clears throat> Um, in inaugural itself, just like uh, another speech or another pol more political, uh, as I said, more political uh, speech in State of the Union. Uh, I know Masarido is interested in politics. <laughs> yeah, in State of the Union is is like um, um, an evaluation for presidents how to to realistically tackle the issue. Uh, at hand, public issue, and then it can be evaluated from the farewell speech. 
or students maybe they can focus on can if can see the consistency as one of the students asked what is consist what about the consistency of precedents i think we can see the consistency of precedents from can be seen from the inaugural address state of the union and then farewell farewell speech we'll see evaluate what is being promised and what is being done and what happens to that we have pew research to be a uh, pew research center this were kind of i think a very well uh, reliable uh, research in america uh, which uh, usually publish the the research uh, outputs or result outcome uh, about the life of america so we we can see how the lines every lines okay um from what the, the leader said what happens in reality and even i think how they express them as i said earlier i think how the, the language construction because we believe i think here i saw some some maybe we have some expert in linguistic here the text is also uh beside um, uh source of information but it's also uh part of linguistic objects which means it it offers um um like a language styles like how how the language styles in inaugural dressed and how um the acceptance speech they are different like I said, the, the tense is different, past, present, and the future, how it is presented in the text, in the constructions of the text. Is future is expressed as future itself, or they have a different way of constructing expression for the future? If for those who are linguistically interested in, you know, analyzing the addressed. I think we have content analysis now. We have discourse analysis. We have uh, hermeneutics. I think most one of a, uh, we have a double hermeneutic now, and or we have a frame analysis. Yeah, frame. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have Goffman. We have uh, Robert. Uh, sorry, Edmund. Uh, frame analysis because in speech, uh, someone is framing people. Even though it's usually uh, used for media studies, but uh, for speeches, it also work. Can all can also work. I mean, yeah. So we have a several uh, kinds of hermeneutics. Whether it is, you know, I think Master Riddle knows well about that better than me. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> we have a Gadamer. We have, you know, many uh, hermeneutics of. Uh, uh, types and we have yeah frame analysis, uh, critical uh, uh, CDA. Yeah. I think uh, that then and then I think it's it's a little bit easy to do because the inaugural text is short because the speeches are short. Yeah, they they are not uh, quite uh, long as it's novel or uh, reading a play, plymouth plantation or uh, the, all the early American uh, literature yeah? <laughs> from. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, well-known romanticism yeah. uh, out, uh, poets yeah. it's, it's, the language is clear because um, as a speech presidential speech is designed to be easily understood so the language is clear but standard because it's carefully designed by as, as I said by the ghost writer because it is intended to be delivered and to be understood. So in terms of language, it's easy, easier to deal with instead of um, uh, uh, Shakespeare's archaic uh, language, for example. So I think, yeah, uh, I, I, I encourage uh, the beloved students, the dear students who are here now, to maybe to look a little bit and who knows you develop your own uh, interest in looking at speech and there are many kinds of speeches there's only the four major speeches but we have another speeches even um, I think uh, the press release can be you begin their texts yeah even um, again uh, 
I think um, I saw some experts here. Maybe yeah, if it is so social context of the all the texts are the mirror of the American experience, so American mind, and how the current American dream. How's the American dream at the midst of COVID? Yeah, we can be we we can see them in in the text of the speeches. How or how the debate? I, I think uh, uh, here we can see the debate of issues right? of now uh, the American candidates for presidents are, are starting to be nominated. We will see what issues are the the strongest issues uh, are presented. I think uh, uh, that what can I uh, share to Dr. Sukarni and Pa yeah. Arido? Thank you, Prof. Gideon. Yeah, uh, very interesting, Prof. Gideon, uh, for the student who come uh, today in this webinar. At least you got some ideas how to do uh, research or conduct a research based on uh, inaugural address. This is, uh, I think, uh, will be very, um, some of us have hasn't done it yet. So I guess this is very uh, enlightening idea also. Uh, we have two uh, comments here in the uh, chat box, Professor uh, Gideon. Uh, the first one is from Ibu Minda, uh, said about, um, what is this? Uh, I found your statement that uh, in, in a not very religious country, Biden refers to God in speech and uh, to her it is very interesting because she always uh, thought that Americans are religious and um, the, the, the second one is from Pak um, Rivka thing to Prof Gideon concerning about the the response to the previous answers of his questions. Very enlightening. Any uh, more comments concerning about this yeah. religious yeah. part? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Th yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm flattered from Pak uh, uh comment. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, uh, from Ibu Linda, uh, comment. Yeah, yeah, I uh, mentioned Mita. Yeah. Mita, oh, I'm sorry. Ibu Mita, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes uh, it's a little bit of paradox. Yeah, that uh, this morning, um, I read in the Pew Research uh, about most striking issues in one of the most striking issues in American life, uh, according to their research, uh, in twenty uh, twenty twenty two last year is that the most of American family, they don't see themselves any, uh, affiliated to any religion anymore. So there are kind of the decrease of people's religiosity. And it seems to happen year by year. But the question is, why it still appears in presidential address and why a president in American uh, uh, presidents when he takes the oath he has to conclude his last uh, phrases with so help me God which can only be said if someone is quite religious and if you look at all the presidents uh, um, uh, American presidents they have a they are affiliated to certain denominations. Um, they said Obama, they don't have any religion, but it's not a kind of uh, pious Christians. But if you look at the, the, the data, he's affiliated to certain church. But Obama is, is one of the presidents who is who was criticized for taking more religious symbols in public areas as a part of uh, religious freedom. And it was criticized by 
the conservative Christians assume like that. So, again, I said it's it's quite difficult to judge. Actually, maybe I may maybe I make mistake by saying that not so religious. But if we look at the the issues of Biden versus Trump, Trump is considered more by some said rural areas people. They're con one consider more religious than Biden. Once I live in Wisconsin, um, the family within which I lived, they uh, they see themselves because they are in urban areas. They 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 don't like to put their their children in a public school. They tend to have homeschooling because they, they if they put this the their assumption if they put their children in public school, they will be easily influenced by um non uh, religious or non Christians values, so they they tend to have their children to have homeschooling, and these people tend to address to to assume themselves as a part of Trumps, not Biden, not Democrats. So, but but uh, <clears throat> if we look again to all Biden's speech, yeah. There we can see how he still uh, quote, yeah, even though not maybe as much, uh, sorry, as many as uh, other presidents, but he's still there with some quotes. But I think it is it is part of theoretical applications of Jeremiah's structure. Those who write behind Biden are still in the they aware or not aware, conscious or not conscious, they still are under the influence of the structure, the old structure, the old old rhetoric structure that has already been institutionalized in their mind. So probably I think it could be a good a good point to research how the religiosity among uh, presidents Republican or Democrat or or maybe even can be a, a how many times they use can be researched by um, content quantitative content analysis by seeing the frequency and then see what is behind the lines. I think it could be a good point to research. Uh, so thank you so much, Belinda. I think you you bring us all with a new perspective, with new points of new uh, opportunities for research. And the RPTM is closing <laughs> uh, to open maybe the, the the opportunity for research. And uh, I forget exactly. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the the tech the the inaugural tech itself is also can be used for those who are interested in. Uh, teaching, for example, teaching writing, it could be a trigger for critical critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So issues could be, who issues there could be uh, stimulation, trigger, or can be used mm -hmm. for, uh, yeah, for critical thinking or for another kinds of uh, uh, analysis in whether for writing or for other, uh, yeah, linguistics uh, uh, error analysis. I don't know exactly, but Probably it's related to those issues. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Gideon, for such a roughly and enlightening uh, uh, explanations and ideas also at the same time. This is very valuable and a great opportunity to meet you. And also thank you for the participants who has already given comments and uh, uh, questions. And um, Seemingly, we come to the end of the the the, the discussion, Professor Gideon. Uh, uh, I would like to highlight some important points from uh, the presentations that uh, presidential inaugural address is um, a very special address, more than just a, a speech, okay? uh, because um, at at that moment, a chosen. Uh, President is not only glorifying the past, 
but also encouraging the people of United States. And the last one is also, in fact, it comes to the idea of reminding the power of God. <laughs> like it or not. Although it is only on the, on the speech, I don't know. But but yeah. uh, that comes to uh, uh, my mind right now. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, presentations today, Professor uh, Gideon. This is a very great opportunity to share the knowledge with you and also to the participants of this uh, webinar. Uh, the screen and the time, please, but yes, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, thank Professor you. Dr. Mr. Gideon Maru M. Hum for the insightful session. And thank you to Dr. Sukarni Suryaningsi M. Hum as the moderator who has guided the engaging discussion today. Thank you. I'd also like to thank all participants who have participated in this event from beginning to the end. And now everyone, uh, we have reached the end of our event today the presidential inaugural address, the current trees of American civilization. Hopefully what we learn today will be useful for all of us. And on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to say thank you for joining us today and see you in our future events. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor Gideon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Gideon. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Stay healthy. Yes, you too. Keep in touch. See you again. And hopefully, we can invite the colleague here to Manado one day. Ah, that would be great. Yeah. Siapa tahu bisa bertemu di Manado, Prof. Gideon. We will. Prof. Gideon, here we have Pak Tifa, head of department. Hello. Yeah. Hello. yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Take care. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I really hope that in the future we are going to have. Yeah. Asyik mute pak. Mungkin ada kolaborasi yang bisa dilakukan nih. Iya. Yeah. Iya. Yeah. <laughs> Kami banyak akan banyak belajar dari oh, bapak ibu dari uh, Undip dan <laughs> kami senang mungkin satu siapa tahu bisa berkunjung ke sana. Untuk yeah, tadi dibilang uh, Prof Alamsa untuk bisa bekerja sama. Betul betul ya. Kami bisa kan, dibina. Uh, betul. Ini kebetulan uh, ini teman-teman sedang bersemangat sekali okay. untuk melakukan beberapa kegiatan tematis akademik itu Prof. Mungkin dalam bentuk join desa juga bisa nanti <laughs> Dengan Boleh boleh Pak. Kebetulan dulu, di kampus ya. saya juga uh, wakil dekan bidang akademik jadi saya kira hmm. saya bisa Oh iya, nah, Wait, iya mantap. Iya. <laughs> mantap ya. Yeah. 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 Saya menunggu petunjuk dari Prof Alamsa dan Pak Arido dan kawan-kawan. Siap-siap, <laughs> yeah. sip, mantap ini. Saya menunggu perintah saja kalau apa yang kita ini saya siap Pak, Pak Prof, yeah. Pak Arido yeah. dan teman-teman yang lain. Siap, siap Prof Gideon. Gideon. Iya. <laughs> Baik, Baik, berarti kita, kita akhiri. Ini. Terima kasih, Prof. Gideon. Terima kasih, Bu Sukarni. Terima kasih, Bu Sukarni. Sampai bertemu lagi.